Peace. This is Brother Hatim, and you have joined us on Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to check out our site and subscribe at tribe.giamijourney.com. All my brothers and sisters, hold hands and bow your heads. Let us pray. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth amongst the God. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? I say, defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of court. I have said, you are God. And all of you are chosen of the most high. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all nations. Allah who art This is Kabara Franks, and you are now listening to the Giami Journey Radio. Keep up with the journey. Check out what we have done in the past. Go to journeyarchives.com. This is Adam Sheik, a.k.a. Ace, live from Shisha Lounge. And you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to follow Giami Journey on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Check us out. Join the journey. This is Adam Sheik, a.k.a. Ace, live from Shisha Lounge, and you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. You are now listening to Giami Journey Radio with Monica. Enjoy. This is Marina and this is Yame Journey Radio. This is Willie. Welcome to Yame Journey Radio. I want to give a shout out to Silver Kevin, all my Silver Nation out there. I want to give a shout out to my mom. I want to give a shout out to my dad for raising me and my family for being around me. And I want to give a shout out to the people of my generation that's trying to do something big. A.K.A. Mr. Diddy. Mr. Diddy, does it sound good? I think it sounds great. Right now, you listening to Giami Journey Radio. If you're not adding anything to the culture that you claim, you don't deserve to carry his name. This is Brother Hatem coming at you live, and you are now listening to the Giami Journey Radio. Shouts out to the Giami tribe, Giami family. Stand up. Peace. Thank you. 
If you're not adding anything to the culture that you claim, you don't deserve to carry your fame. This is Brother Hatem coming at you live, and you are now listening to the Giami Journey Radio. Shouts out to Giami Tribe, Giami Giami Family, stand up. And you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. Peace. Aspiration, aspiration. We have, I keep trying to tell people, we are a generational people. What does this mean? As a generational people, this means that we plan for generations, which, and it also means that we come back. Proper type of aspiration. 
we have been brainwashed and programmed to focus on personal aspirations rather than generational aspirations. Now, what's the problem with that? I'm going to go a little bit more on that in the morning, but I just want you to think about it. Many of us have been taught and programmed to go for personal personal aspiration. It's me against the world. I have to I I have to achieve I have to get this degree. I have to earn the money. I owe no one. Conversely, generational the new by the way I'm real interested in doing that show Story of the day called the Wasp, the Pat, the Partridge, the Partridge Farm. Now, the first thing I want to stress for those that are new and maybe tuning in, when we read the proverbs, when we read the folk when we read the proverbs that we do on our
a personal aspiration. We have to not personal aspiration. Do not allow to the world about the world. says, yep, had a similar discussion about deadbeat dads the other day and was cursed out to the power of 10 by certain people when I mentioned Jesus. You know, I mean, then talk about, I mean, really think about this. Talk about Buddha. Because right before the Buddha left to seek enlightenment, he got married, had a baby, stayed for a year and a half, but could no longer stay because the world was out there calling him and mastery was going on. He needed the master and he left his family. You never hear nothing else about this. So, we have several luminaries in the spiritual world who were dead. Hell, they didn't even communicate back to each other. I'm just, I'm just, oh, I forgot. Lines are open. <laughs> Let me go open up these lines. I see Brother Shaka just popped up, and um, I know he's going to want to join the conversation. Brother Nubis, feel free to call in. The number is 614-556-4535. You don't need a pen. All you need to do is call in. You know what I'm saying? I'm praying for this on a monthly basis so I can make sure that my family can get on with it. You know what I'm saying? So that we can converse because this deep type of conversation that's going to move us to a true revolutionary mindset. You know what I'm saying? To a true revolutionary mindset. Not an angry mindset. Not a depressed mindset. Not a defeated mindset. But a truly revolutionary mindset. An individual that is looking for opportunity. Opportunities to take advantage and move us to the next level of our lives. And people. people that's living that, that have generational that has family aspirations, that have 
community aspirations, to have nation aspirations. This is what we need. This is what we need, fam. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, my job. It's part of my job, right? Until I get fired from it. Alright, so now let's go on into this tale. For those that want to join the call, I'm going to post the number up. As soon as my, my computer moving slow, I'm going to have to upgrade you because, you know, this technology is out. You know, they designed it to fail in two years. I ain't mad at their hustle. I ain't knocking the hustle. Six one five five six four five three five. There you go, family. Pin it up so you can join the conversation. So here's the story. The wasp and the partridges, overcome with thirst, came to a farmer and besought him to give them some water to drink. They promised amply, amply to repay him the favor which they asked. The partridges declared that they would dig around his vines and make them produce fine grapes. The wasp said that they would keep guard and drive off thieves with their steam. But the farmer interrupted them saying, I have already two oxen who without making any promises do all these things. It is surely better for me to give the water to them than you. Alright, who that on the line? It's Jocka. What's up, bro? I'm doing good. You got any opening words for the family? Not yet, man. You know how it is. I just, uh, I just signed in. I saw you was on. And, uh, I, I hadn't even gotten, you know, just to, to hear uh, where you was at in the conversation. Oh. All right, so right now I'm reading the folk tale. So I was talking about um, personal aspiration, how I'm going to do a little bit more talk on that in the morning, personal, how personal aspirations have kind of destroyed us, where we might need to change our focus from the personal to the family to the, to the tribe, to the nation. You know what I'm saying? Because personal aspirations have kind of led us along the path of becoming consumers, not producers. Um, like for example, why if I go into discussion I'm gonna get to talk about it no more. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it right yeah, here. Say no more. I'm gonna jump right in if you don't mind. Go ahead. Alright. Woo! Now, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of a testimonial. Alright? Um, about a week ago, a little over a week, I uh I decided that I had to, I had, I, I got a, a mortgage to use, and, and it's time for me to go ahead and, 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 uh, and, and get something for me and my, my son and something to leave to my kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, I decided to go down to this, this uh, development towards downtown and, and ask the uh, developer if they would sell me, uh, you know, part of their, uh, this uh, commercial building so that I can do my bed and breakfast and have a little spot for my label and possibly uh, open up a transitional living operation, taking these uh, these juveniles out of the uh, state wardship into independent lifestyle. And, uh, you know, w with a major emphasis of uh, leading them into independent lifestyle um, instead of and so um, last Monday, when the conversation took place, and, and the uh, and the gentleman, the the developer, he says, "Well, you know, we're not zoned for any residential, so that kind of cuts us at the knees. But we really like what you're talking about. Gina. Um, we happen to have this other building, uh, you know, a few streets away." That we got on the market for 600 grand right now. Take a look at it if you like it. You know, um, give us 600 grand and it's yours. I looked at it. I liked it. I went on Facebook that Monday and I, I claimed it. I said, this is it. You know, um, I went on Facebook Live and I told folks, listen, you know, live your dream. I don't know how I'm going to get this. I don't know how I'm going to get it, but this is mine. You know, 
Um, I don't know how long I have to be able to leave this. But this is the part of, you know, I, I feel like this is my destiny to leave, um, you know, this with incubates a certain level of ele elevation or evolution within our community right now. What they call my project is a transgenerational community. Alright? And it's done here with me from before. Now, by Tuesday, I bring the director of neighborhood connections to the conversation. And the director, the, uh, the developer, hears the conversation once again, what's going on. And he says, you know what, I really, really love the details of what I'm hearing about this vision. So, we would extend it to you for what we have invested in it. Which is 275. So, in 24 hours, I'm looking at how do I get 600 grand into how do I get 275 grand. All right? The following day, I get my financial person at the table to sit down. She brings her guru. And I tell them more about my vision. And a brother asked me, he says, where are the elders at? I said, I got to get them down the line. All right? Because I want to do all of this other stuff. I want this garden on the rooftop. I want the, uh, the solar panels We're right next to the lake so the whole ceiling can be, or the, the whole uh, roof can be solar panels. And so I want to deal with the elders later on. He said, well, check this out. You get to them first. That means that we can pull an immediate resource with the F. HA202 redevelopment loan and take care of the whole thing. That way, in essence, you step into ownership without having to pay a dime at this point. And so now I'm looking at who do I trust enough to be able to tell about this project able to work together, that's not going to stash it up from under me. And that's a whole different conversation. But in the meanwhile, understand, because I claimed this thing and because it was a thing of selflessness, it attracted more of a selfless vibration. And right now, it's really a matter of alignment because all the resources are right there. Right, and they only came into fruition through, you know, through me being able to, uh, from me professing that this is what I want, and this is what I want to do. This is the community that I want to create. So it's, you know, now here in Cleveland, it would be the first transgenerational, transcultural artist community within a six-floor building, six-story building. And uh, on each floor, it's 10,000 square feet. Hmm. Go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Hey. So, all right, now, let's bring it down. Personal aspiration. Generational aspiration. See, when we plug into the generational piece, we plug into we plug into having all of our spiritual power. Y'all call it whatever you want. You got you plug yourself into a bigger force, a bigger power that draws things to you. Right? And let's start building. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's bring you around to the folktale because I think the folktale might kind of fit with what you're saying. Alright, listen. It's called the Walls, the Partridge, the Partridges, and the Farmers. The walls and the parches, overcome with thirst, came to a farmer and besought him to give them some water to drink. They promised amply to repay him the favor which they asked. The partridges declared that they would dig around his vines and make them produce finer, finer grapes. The wall said 
that they would keep guard and drive off thieves with their stings. But the farmer interrupted them saying, I have already two oxen who, without making any promises, do all these things. It is surely better for me to give the water to them than to you. Y'all hear that? <laughs> all right. Y'all hear that? All right, Shaka. Did you hear the story? Yes, sir. Did you hear the story? I heard the story. Can you make, can you... I, I, it, it's still a little bit unclear. Okay. I might need to hear it one more time. I'm going to go through it. One more time. The wasps and the partridges. They're like, they're not, you know, like the partridge family. Those little, they, they almost like doves in between a dove and a and, and Right, right. And like the partridge in the pear tree. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Dove like, but more like a, 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 a pigeon. We call it the wasp and the pigeons for those that's in the city. The wasp and the pigeons, overcome with thirst, came to the farmer and besought him to give them some water to drink. They promised aptly to repay him the favor which they asked. The partridges declared that they would dig around his vine and make them produce finer grapes. The wasp said that they would keep guard and drive off thieves with their stings, but the farmer interrupted them saying, hey, 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 I have already two oxen who without making any promises do all these things. It is surely better for me to give the water to them than to you. Mm. All right, mm. let's get into it. Now remember, when we break down the story, let's look at the case. We have a farmer, we have a partridge, we have what? But we also have two oxen that's not mentioned in the title right now. We have the the partridge and the wasp making an offer. Right? Listen, we're dying, we're dying from third family. We, we ain't even family to it, but listen. You give us some water, right? We promise that we will repay you by digging around your, your grape bushes and making sure that they would be better grapes. And the wall said, I will protect your property from thieves. And the farmer replied, yo, I got two options. They do all that shit for me without any promises being made. Now, here's where the lesson is for some of you. Right? Now, those of you that's been listening, you may remember the story about the goats and the goat herder, where the goat herder had some goats out, and some wild goats saw them and joined the flock. When it was time to go back, the goat herder took the goats back to the pen and fed the new goats wild goats real well and didn't take good care of his, his, his goats that was dead. So he fed them the best food and gave his his own goats to scrap. And then when it was time for them to go back out, rather than going with him, the wild goats ran away. And 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 the, the goat herd looked at the uh the wild goats and said, Y'all ungrateful. They said, no, 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 I want you to know, I want you to know that. We appreciate you taking care of it. But the problem we got with you is that if you treated those that have been with you all this time like you treated them because somebody new came on the scene, what's going to happen when we are no longer new? And another new bunch comes. Now, the, 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 the lesson in the story is take care of those that have been faithful. Look out for them. Because you always gonna have people come from the outside trying to eat off you. Shaka, we experienced that when we when I was doing the Giami house. We experienced that when you probably was doing music. You always got these new people that's coming in. And in some instances we wanna be nice to the new people because we want them to join or want them to join into the world. But the problem is when we overlook those that have been faithful those that are new. 
what's the problem? Right? Because he's like, look, I got an ox. An ox dig around the grass. The ox is easy when they, they pulling up the grass around it. They manure, fertilizes the grapes. And so shit, I'm ha I got some good grapes. And if anybody jump over the fence, the oxen is going to make sure that they help their ass back across the fence. So I don't need anybody new. I don't need because I already got people doing shit that you promised. And a lot of times in our community, we will take deals from people to do shit for us that we have already been doing for ourselves that we are we could do for us. Actually, this is a good story about, about the plight of our community. We will support others' businesses more than we support our own. Somebody that's been around us all this time to come up with a good business idea and market it within our community. Now, I'll tell him, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the way it is, man. Go ahead, listen. I'm listening. This story is too close for comfort. Uh. Because I've drawn a direct, I have drawn a direct line from that story that you just told back to, you know, uh, you, and you took us back to the Diami house, right? Word. And I say, uh, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I really, um, you know, and, and it took the years of acceptance, just understand that it wasn't time. You know, a lot of the things that we set up to do back then, and understand, the, the testimony that I told earlier in the conversation, uh -huh. You already know that idea is at least 15 years old. Yes, that's sir. what that's the way I was talking in the Tinyami house. Am I right? Yes, sir. All right. Every aspect of the dimensions of what it was that I was trying to build then, and because of my selflessness, I felt like that alone protected the energy. I felt like that alone what's going to motivate us to move collectively and it didn't happen the way that I would like to have seen it happen. And I remember one time, you know, because we, I, you know, we did trench work together. When I came into the industry of social services and whatnot, I actually, you know, kind of stepped into your old shoes at the Huck House, you know what I mean? And to, um, into a role where people already knew in the community that eventually if we got together and we built something substantial, it was going to be substantial. Mm -hmm. And I think that on a certain level and later on in that process, you kind of delegated to people, um, parts of your own vision that were not going to be tended to as diligently as I would have if they were delegated to me. I Furthermore, agree. <laughs> go ahead. I agree. I ain't never been, I, I ain't never been, how can I put it? I, 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 I trust. There, you know what I'm saying? Because it's almost like How can I put it? Well, you already know my, my my definition of trust, or how I put trust in the context, is that you trust one to be what you experience them to be. Nothing more, nothing less. People are going to tell you that, that they can do X, Y, and Z. People are going to beat their chest and make it seem like, yo, they the, they the best at whatever they say. But when it comes to the proof of it all, you can only trust one to be what you've experienced them to be. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, right. and um, you know, yeah. I mean, and, and as far as you know, because I tell you, as far as our bond, you know, as I, I feel like our bond is as paternal as paternalism gets. You understand? So when I feel that you know, in, in the past, and we live and we learn, but you bring those lesser energies into the context of, you know, the, the, you know, uh, and this is why I'm so big on being able to identify your intentions, whether it be from the higher self or the lower self, because I, I feel like these, you know, when we look back at the decisions that we've made, 
the bad decisions that we made is because we allowed those determinations to be made by the lower self. You understand? So, you know, moving back, I feel that that's also why when you're moving, when you are on this constant path and this narrow path, that it's going to be the type of sacrifice that you and I have experienced since. Because that's the only way that we're going to get to the place that we're trying to be, to be able to build the things that we're trying to be. We've got to go back into the trenches and find those who are hungry, those who really still understand and can see the light within our vision and who have the le uh, at least um, a level of devotion to be able to contribute right. to your dreams. Because there's a lot of us, our age, who are so exhausted right now, they burn out of the movement. Oh, yeah. They put so much in into strategies that weren't working that when it comes to a real strategy, they right can, now, right. even if they wanted to, they don't have the energy to contribute. I'm going to say this. Recognizing the oxes in our lives. Because you have a lot of, you have a lot, I mean, because as a farmer, he probably had other animals that he could have brought up, right? But he brought up the ox. Why? Oxes represent strength, endurance, stability. You build a farm off of the strength of ox, right? Now, one of my, one of my pieces was, oh, we all in this, we all family, everybody, um, we, we eating off of this. So there's no way that you would be foolish. But they were, you know, they were washed drinking other people's water. They were partridges drinking other people's water. And it's cool. Like you said, we live in the You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So being farmers, being the farmer, we're going to have people bringing us um, pitches. Like the partridge and uh, the hornets or the wasp. We got to be able to recognize when they want to do something for us that we are that we already got being done for us. Right? We don't and actually we might need because even with this, because the farmer could have said yes and allowed the partridge and the wasp onto the ground. What I was doing, as a farmer, what I was doing. <laughs> Shit, I open up the farm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Welcome. Oh, you wanna dig around the oh, I got oxen digging around, but hey, you can go and help them. So I think uh, another lesson in this story is sometime knowing when to turn down uh, a proposal. You know what I'm saying? Well, also, I mean, yeah. Now dig this in putting into con in, into the context of a farmer and a wasp. Well, especially in African tradition, any time that there's a plague of, like, locusts or killer bees or wasps, there's only one way. There's only one way to rid your village of that, uh, of that infestation. Burn it. <laughs> Burn it. And see, so, this whole conversation can be... Uh, you know, in, I mean, in, in terms of that and understanding what detriment this wasp really could bring the farmer, I mean, what is his motivation? What is it that he really wants from the farmer? And what is it that the, the farmer wants from him? Mm. Well, we know what the farmer wanted from him. Which is what? Nothing. From, from the wasp. Nothing. What is, was nothing. He wanted nothing. He wanted, he, you know what I'm saying? They made a proposal to him. He didn't, he wanted to need, he didn't know he needed wants. And after he looked at their proposal, he figured that he didn't need them. Now, one of the things that I think, I know that I did, I can't speak for you. I would look at proposals and be like, oh, we can make this fit. Oh, yeah, you know, I can fit your vision in with, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to be like, nah, I'm cool. Nah. I got somebody working on that. I don't need nobody else with that. Now, I got somebody mm -hmm. that got skill. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's like by opening up, we expose ourselves to so. I mean, you got to think about all the bullshit that, that, that went on. I mean, just with the Gianni house, just with the Huckleberry, just all the shit because we was open. And, and I, I, me, I'm looking for the good nature in everything. 
You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I'm looking for, I'm expecting the good out of you because, family, I have been nothing but a benefit to you. You know what I'm saying? And then you start realizing that, you know what I'm saying, you only as good as the last favor you did to someone else. It don't even matter. I mean, you know, with all, I mean, if you think about all the shit that came up missing in the house, you know what I'm saying? We got people that's eating with us every day that, you know what I'm saying, that they laying down at the house every day. But they didn't, wouldn't even have a place to lay their head. But they would risk all of that so that they can have a computer or have a watch. You know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or I mean, and it's like, you know, these are the wants, you know what I'm saying? Because after the wants get comfortable, what do they do? The wants start um, burrowing into the barn. You know what I'm saying? They start throwing yeah. up the fence. What does the partridge do? It's like a pigeon. It's just shit everywhere. You know what I'm saying? At first, it's cool. But once you let them in, like you said, with the wasp, there's only one way to get rid of them. You burn them. Okay. Um, Anubis says precisely why I'm very cautious about whom I choose to interact with. And and and, and uh, being being uh, I'm gonna be 50 on my next birthday. It took me a long time. So one of the, one of the major things that I try to make sure that all the young people I'm working with understand or get is that 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 discretion and and truly because in another aspect that I don't think that we really have put in place, but you can kind of see it or at least in the old school Freemasons that you can see in the old school fraternities and stuff like that. True, um, true brotherhoods, true sisterhoods. There was a. a a trying process that an individual had to come through so that they could truly prove why they were there. You know what I'm saying? You man, I, I, I believe, man, if the fire ends, this is the thing, this just blows my mind, man, how we are conditioned to do just the opposite of what nature would have us do. Oh, yeah. Now, years and years the, the of fire ant, I don't know if you know this, Hashem, but the fire ants, during a hurricane, they find each other on their radar, and they find as many of them as possible, and they gather together, and they hold each other, and they create a net. A net that, no matter how big the wave is, they don't let go. Mm-hmm. All right? And they hold on, no matter how long the monsoon, or no matter how long... The, the, the hurricane is going, they hold on to each other so that they can survive the hurricane. Man. Because they understand. I mean, Let me depend on some, huh? That's, that, that's because ants haven't started school yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't got, they ain't got <laughs> lessons in teaching teaching other ants how to be ants. Ants haven't developed schools yet. You know what I'm saying? Because as as as, as the brilliant scholar um, Amos Wilson says, an education that is not leading black people towards serving black people and moving us into a better situation is not a good education. We are being educated against our own survival every day. We're moving against our survival. In some senses, even by sending our kids to where we send them, we're moving against our survival. In the way we work it, we're moving, we're working against survival. Human beings are designed, I mean, you gotta think about this, we are designed to produce, then consume. Right now, wow. right now, we consume. We produce nothing and we consume. We sell time. Right? Hmm. And as soon as we get it, we don't throw it into production, we throw it into consumption. We have been totally educated out of the this is what this is what this is what this process does. And it moves us up out of a natural state and moves us into a, a synthetic state of human existence. So we mm-hmm. we have more of it than any other than anybody else. Because there's nothing to supplement on. You know, Asians have, have, have their culture to supplement. You know what I'm saying? You got all these other cultures that, that supplement and get people to understand. Look, all right, Google, hey, talk about Columbus, but hey, you have to understand this about such and such. And blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? And we do this and we don't do that. 
I, you know what I'm saying? I don't care what happens there. You know what I'm saying? You got your friends there, but your friends are not coming. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like you have these walls to protect their survival because once again, it's that generational. When it, when it's personal aspiration, I could surrender all that I am. Think about this, Shaka. We was, we was taught to move away from the community, dog. I mean, really think about this. You went, you spent all those years in college. I spent all those years in college, and the major goal for all of us was to supposedly make it out. Make it out of what? None of us was really tasked with going out, getting information, and bringing it back to the community we came from. When I left Akron, I never had to look back. Matter of fact, my people encouraged me not to, not don't look back. Just keep moving forward. Rather than you folks go get that shit and get right back here. <laughs> And let's feel. You know what? Honestly, I think I probably would have done better if that's if, if, if that's what I was de- if, if if I was dealing with a situation where it was like, hey, go to this new place. Don't even think about showing your face back here. <laughs> that's a different kind of that's a different kind of motivation. Oh, and uh, well, let me speak for myself. Hey, uh, let me maybe speak when for you myself. come back, I want you to beat somebody. Okay. See, you know my my family made it so that I could go come home and visit. They let me know that I was supposed to be there to visit. You're supposed to make it out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, make it out. You know, I look back, make it out of what? Make it out of where? Because, you know, uh, I, cause, you know, people like, you know, they talk about projects and shit. You know what I'm saying? I look around at what I'm paying rent for. You, you know what I'm saying? This is a glorified fucking project. You know what I'm right. saying? I moved, I moved, I moved from a possibility of a project in, in, in Northeast Ohio, down in Central Ohio. I'm living in, 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 in the same type of thing that I grew up in. Mm-hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, make it out of where? Make it, make it, it to do, you know, to do what? So it's like, with a lot of us, there's no sense of purpose or responsibility placed on us other than you come back somebody. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? I spent 18 years of my life with you. I, I am somebody. No, you're nobody without that education. You're nobody. You're nothing if you don't have that education. Mm. What? What? I you understand know? it, man. You know, and this is uh, this, uh, this is what put me. Well, this is what put me in the situation I'm in because I'm working confused. I'm trying to help motherfuckers escape. And then I'm realizing that what I escaped, what I what I what I escaped from is actually what I'm running to. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot different than my grandparents, right? My grandparents, because Jackie just joined us, she told me to read that book, uh, "Warm from Different Sons" or whatever. I'm listening to that shit now, and I'm thinking about my grandparents' story, and it's different for them because when I, when I came up, for me to make it out, it was nothing like <laughs> them making it out. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's a whole different, it's a whole, when you make it out of, out of the South, where the only possibility was for you to pick goddamn oranges, where, where my people was from, you pick oranges, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, or, or hustle, or do whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Or, you can move north possibly working one of these factories to make some money. They were able to make a major life shift economically that is not available to people in our generation at this point in time. There's really no place that we could go like back then where we are going to make any major difference in our life economically, politically, socially. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we have to start building on. That's what I'm talking about, that generation, being, doing, doing shit generationally. Because, like, for example, with, with the Ambrosia, right? I'm not pressed about getting this shit in store. What I'm uh, pressed about is mastering the skill, right? And being able to leave one of my children, or at least pass on to my children, a, a, a heritage of this shit being moved around there for 20 years and then participate in the process. And they got something that they own. A skill 
But you know, somebody else could get into it new. Right now, I'm almost two years deep in this shit. Imagine 15 years from now, please be wrong. Yeah, please might look at me like shit. Um, study some biochemistry. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your child might look at me like, hey, shit. Real might be like, wait, you do what? Using what process? You know what I'm saying? Our kids look at this shit and be like, oh. So now, we got generations of individuals producing. Right? You know something small. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Right now, we produce national absolutely but bringing it back. I don't even remember how I got on that shit. That was a commercial mm -hmm. brought to you by that ambrosia. Alright, um But um yeah, hey, I'm gonna go commercial too. Do it. I just I just felt like saying that. Um but I say this too. You know, I've been talking a long time about my son. Who, by the oh, way, happy birthday. Happy. happy belated birthday, sir. No, no, no. It, it hasn't even come yet. It, it, it's on the 25th. It's on the 25th. So I know we're going to um, we gonna be on the air again before then. So I just thought I'd, I'd give him a shout because, you know, I, I have these uh, meetings with my network. We have network meetings once a month. And for the past three months that we would go, first thing that they would do is put the pen in the markers, in the paper in front of Pharaoh because that's his thing and my whole network knows that so they're like alright well where's the art supplies let's get it in front of Pharaoh and so he's established that reputation number one as an artist number two as an artist who is starting to understand the concept of having a meaning to his art so for the past three months there's an individual in the network who always waits for Pharaoh to get done with his first uh, his, his, his first piece of the day, and he buys it from him. And, uh, you know, he gives Pharaoh the money. He doesn't give me the money. He gives, he gives Pharaoh $10, $20 per picture. Hold on to your money, Pharaoh. I used to live with your dad. Hold on to your money. <laughs> oh, he know it. Because he goes straight to Big Fun. That's his spot, I said. And there's one in Columbus and there's one in Cleveland. He go to Big Fun and he had, he asked him, uh, hey, y'all got that um y'all got that California raisin with the glittery glove, the Michael Jackson California yeah. raisin? And every time they tell him no Pharaoh, we don't have it. Sometimes he call him on the phone. Like, do y'all have um mad magazine faces? And then say, No Pharaoh, we don't have it. They know him by first name faces, okay? Because he spends his own money on the toys because I, I don't buy them toys anymore. I tell him you got to use your own money to get your own toys. So now he's constantly Y'all hear that? How can I get money? Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? And so, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I mean, it just, it blows my mind. You know, I, I, I told the brother, I said, listen, you don't have to always give him money. You know, and the guy says, he said, yes, I do. And he says, let me tell you like this. He said, your son, your son is going to be something big one day. All right? And I see your investment in it. It was like, this is my investment. Not just in your son, but my grandkids. Because I believe so much in your son. Your son is an artist that I know that this is going to be worth money someday. So I'm, I'm making this investment so that I got something valuable to pass my children's children. Sister Jackie. my mind. Hold on. Sister Jackie said the point of the book. I wasn't talking about the point of the book. But all right. Sister Jack said, the point of the book is to make sense of your footprints in society and place historic context to it. It has so much significance in understanding the Trump administration and what built our reaction to it. All right, Miss Jackie, you got you. Where my goddamn article? Can I have my article now? Um, but, hey, um, Jackie, you, you were on late because we're about to get up off of this. We are 15 minutes over. The story is the wasp, the partridge, and the farmer. Might be a message in here for you. The wasp and the partridges, overcome with thirst, came to a farmer and besought him to give them some water to drink. They promised amply to repay him the favor which they asked. The partridge declared that they would dig around his vines and make them produce finer grapes. The wasp said that they would keep guard and drive off thieves and with their sting. But the farmer interrupted them saying, I have already two oxen without making any promises to all these things. 
It is surely better for me to give the water to them than to you. All right, family. Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave y'all on that one. You know what I mean? Y'all heard, heard me and Shaka call. I'm, I'm discussed. We talk lightly about this, but these these stories pop up other conversations, and then you go in a million different ways. You know why? Because it's crystallized wisdom. Start utilizing your ancestors to find it. But don't stop with a son. Your grandmama told you a tale that may save somebody's life. And you sit on it. You call it. Your grandfather might have told you something about his life that you might be able to pass on. And somebody out there might need that story. And you're going family. You got to pass on the wisdom. You got to start sharing. You got to start building. You don't have to all of I'm not You know what I'm saying? We, we, we. My family comes from all different angles. You know what I'm saying? My tribe comes from all different angles. You know what I'm saying? So take time. Listen to the story. And get the message out of the Now, I'm just sharing with the eye. You know, she didn't have a story. She didn't have a story. That's why I had a mind. Alright? So yo, this is Brother Hot Tim. I want to thank Brother Shock for jumping in. I want to um, share, uh, I want to thank Sister Jackie for calling. I want to sh send shots out to Brother Anubis. Y'all be on the lookout. Because me and the brother going to do something on Finn from Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? So that we can go on, you know, talk about um, um, the black existence in the Star Wars universe. As well as the black existence in the Marvel and the DC universe. You know what I'm saying? You know, since I'm on this and stuff. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna do it like that. We're gonna chop it up. So family, also make sure that you can't catch me in the morning for the daily toast. Catch the daily toast. Put the thumbs up on it to keep it moving. Post one of your ancestors on it. Let's get a running line of ancestors because I'm trying to build a list. So not only I can see mine, but some of y'all that been listening to me regularly, I want to salute your ancestors too, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have you on the podcast. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be blessed by your encouragement and your wisdom. So, this brother I have to be here for. I'm out. Peace. 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 This is Brother Hatim, and you have joined us on Giami Journey Radio. Be sure to check out our site. And subscribe.